There you are. You are now. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mark. And I'm starting the meeting recordings. There you are. You are now. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the MAP3 Citizens Advisory Board video conference meeting for May the 27th, 2021. We have a few announcements to make regarding the video conference meeting. First, if the video conference is disconnected at any time during the meeting, the meeting shall be stopped and reconvened once the audio video connection is restored. If communications are unable to be restored within 15 minutes, items remaining for consideration will be continued at 11.30 a.m. on May 27, 2021 via video conference. The agenda and documents are located on okc.gov. To speak on a certain agenda item, please call or text your request in advance of the meeting to 405-205 4195. Please include your name, the agenda item number, and the reason you would like to speak. Please submit your request prior to the beginning of the meeting to avoid receiving your request after your item has been considered. City staff will attempt to submit requests received during the meeting to process them to the meeting chair. To speak under comments by board, staff, and citizens, please call or text 405 205-4195. Please list your name, address, telephone number, and the subject to which you address the, want to address the board. I want to advise the, the board in advance that we have received requests uh, for citizens to uh, be heard on a particular agenda item today, and they will be permitted to uh, provide information to us on that agenda item when it comes up on the regular item. Those comments will be limited to three minutes each, and that and the agenda item for which each of them have asked to be heard is item four, uh, Roman numeral four, item J. So we have a good number of items before that. Uh, I would ask staff to tell us uh, whether or not we have a quorum present for the meeting. This is Lisa. Yes, you have a quorum. We do have a quorum. Do you want to call the roll, Lisa, or shall we uh, begin? It's not necessary on Zoom since we can see them. All right. Then we will officially call the meeting to order. Uh, you have been provided with the minutes of our April the 22nd meeting. Are there additions or corrections to those minutes? Shall we approve them? Approval. Is there a second? 
Okay, it's been moved uh, by Dean Morales, seconded by Bob Newland, that we approve that the minutes. Further discussion? Cast your vote. This is Zane. I'm not getting the vote. You might try to hit escape. How do you wish to vote? Uh, I got it. Thank you. How do you vote? Okay, got it. Thanks, Mark. Okay, the uh, the item has has been approved and passed. Uh, that brings us to item three on the agenda. This is for the approval of the minutes of April the 29th, 2021. The special meeting that we had on that date, you've been furnished with copies of those minutes. Are there additions or corrections? Bob Nalen has moved that we approve it. Is there a second? Michael Adams has seconded the motion. Cast your vote. The minutes have the motion passed. The minutes are approved. That brings us to item number four. Uh, and we'll move first to item A. David? Sorry, I didn't have the button pushed there. So you have in your packet the uh, revenue and expenditures reports uh, for the period ending April 30th, 2021. I should turn on my video also. <clears throat> So for on the revenue side for the month, $63,832. Fiscal year, $1,199,278. And total, $836,091,222. I might point out that you'll see on the revenue side for the month, there's a, a deduct. That has to do with reallocations that we uh, see all the time and that comes from the tax commission, but then you see a significant amount of interest there. On the expenditure side, there's 3,482,104 for the month, for the fiscal year, 57,410,666, and total of 736,391,910. Then you also have the budget and obligations report in its usual form. Um, I'll, I'll try to answer any questions that you might have on either of these documents. Questions for David? Uh, David, this is Mike Adams. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. At, at last month's meeting, you gave us an update on, on where we were, and I think we had an open question from that meeting as to how much unallocated excess. <clears throat> yes, sir. So um, there's about $4 million in, in round numbers left that is unallocated, and Two million of that was left from that whole discussion about, uh, seems like it was forever ago, uh, about 18 months ago, I think, of, of when those allocations were made, significant amounts of money moved. So there was about two million left from that. And then in the interim, there's two million dollars more of interest that has been gained. So remember that even though money was allocated towards, say, uh, the biggest project being the convention center, if we hadn't written the checks, it was still in the bank gaining interest. So we, we still were able to get another $2 million in interest. So there's about $4 million in unallocated excess collections and in interest right now. And, and that's in the, in the overall pro program, not in addition of other monies left over in the individual uh, project budgets. That, that is correct. Thank you very much. Hey, David, this is Paul Neal. Just, just to follow up on that, uh, the, the amount of receipts is the four or five million above what shows up you know, as the total budget on the budget and obligations report. Is that the four million approximately that you're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. I just want to make sure I was understanding. Thank you. Other questions? Shall we receive the report? <coughs> Bob Nalen has moved that we receive the report, seconded by Zane Boatwright. Is there further discussion? 
Cast your ballot. Ms. Nice, how do you vote? I pressed the button, so I'm not sure why it's not picking up, but um, I vote yay. Thank you. And this is Cecilia. I've joined the meeting. Thank you. All right. The, uh, the item has been approved. It was passed. Uh, that brings us then to item B under Roman numeral four. <coughs> David? Yes, sir. We'd like to periodically bring you uh, an update on projects that are underway. And today, Gavin McMillian, McMillan from Hargraves Jones is here to show you what's going on with the lower park. So I'd like to turn it over to Gavin. Good morning, everyone. Uh, glad to Good be morning. here. Good morning. I'm, uh, I'm here in person, so it'll, it'll be great to see you all in person, hopefully next time. Um, I'm going to share my screen. And hopefully you can see that now. There we go. Um, so for those of you who have uh, driven by the site um, <clears throat> in, the, in the past few months, we've seen a, a little more progress and uh, things are sta starting to take shape. So just as a reminder, uh, the successful upper park in the middle of the screen there and the lower park from the interstate down to the river, uh, core to shore. And uh, we got some aerial photographs that just uh, that proved that as well. So just to recap, going from uh, upper uh, left to, to the uh, bottom of the river, uh, the facilities included a uh, synthetic soccer field uh, up the top here, a sports pavilion with restrooms and storage and a concession area. Uh, existing trees with, with uh, nature play inside of it, coming off the Skydance Bridge and the Promenade, which goes all the way down to the south, much like the Upper Park. And along the way, we see a uh, sports courts area, uh, futsal, pickleball, and basketball. And as we go to the other side of the Cusack lot in the middle here, the out parcel, uh, we see a meandering pathway through the lawn areas, and then the overlook hill down the bottom here, a plaza and the second building in the in the park, uh, the Hill Pavilion for restrooms and outdoor shaded area, and then eventually the connection to the river. So uh, my presentation is just to give you uh, some photos of recent construction progress, and then some housekeeping items for our next change order that we are recommending to go through the city council. So uh, these are drone uh, images from above. So the drones hovering above the river in the south, looking back to downtown. Here you can see the hill taking shape. Uh, you can just see the outline of the promenade taking shape there. The courts in the background, sky dance uh, here. So we're gonna fly slowly up overhead. Uh, we're moving up to the, the middle lots here, uh, existing trees. Uh, there'll be rain gardens in here, but uh, the winding walkway happens in the middle here. The uh, hill pavilion to the right here is taking uh, shape now in the foundations. And again, the sports courts in the background, uh, flying up a little closer here. Uh, we are able, unlike the upper park, we, we had lots of existing trees. So they've been a great benefit for the ones that survived the, uh, the ice storm. And uh, here's the courts in the foreground will be two basketball courts, a pickleball court in the middle and a futsal court uh, that will be provided by uh, partners uh, <coughs> and the Skydance Bridge in the background. Um, in the next month, we are uh, confident that the area on the right here between the Bridge and the uh, Robinson Overpass, uh, you'll see trees going in here and the seeding of the native uh, grasses and wildflowers. So we're going to fly to the west now. Uh, this is a great little grove. So we got kind of nature-based play for kids underneath the shade of the trees here, which has been a big asset. The orange clay here, you can see this is the foundations for the sports pavilion going in right now. And then the brown uh, rectangular area will be the synthetic uh, soccer field, uh, which uh, the excavation is taking shape right now. Uh, this is the found we're on the ground now, and this is the foundations for the, the uh, sports pavilion taking shape. Uh, this is the area that will be uh, tree planting happening uh, before uh, it gets too hot this year. 
and that we're hopeful also the hill down the southern end will also have sod on it before uh, the uh, it gets too hot in summer. So we're standing at the end of the Skydance Bridge. It's behind us. We're looking south. Uh, you can see uh, the, the mill in the distance, and we're going to kind of slowly walk down to the south, uh, some of the sidewalks through the park. Mm -hmm. We're on the promenade, still heading south uh, with the Cusack property to the right. And we're just going to sneak by it. So we're on the promenade. You can see the utilities here for the light mast and the lighting uh, going in place. The winding pathway that happens through the middle of the site is now taking south. shape. And we're still heading south. Um, and you can start to see the hill in the distance there. Um, it's got another foot of uh, topsoil to go over it yet. On the left here, you can see a higher pad elevation. That will be the uh, hill pavilion with the restrooms and shaded seating. And we're hopeful uh, the art committee is going to go out for an RFP for the second uh, piece of public art in the Sissetail Park, which will be in the plaza in this location here. Uh, here we are standing on the hill, uh, looking back to downtown. It's a fantastic view, uh, everything that we hope for. And then as we spin around the other way, we can actually see uh, the Oklahoma River. Um, and that's, that's fantastic. <coughs> Um, housekeeping side of things, uh, we've made a lot of progress um, and uh, there's, a, there's a big number in here and I'll talk a little bit about that later, but we are able to find uh, some savings along the way uh, in the deletion of two construction web uh, cams, uh, some savings just over $15,000 that we recommend to approve. And also a credit for uh, the repaving of uh, Harvey Avenue um, the existing uh, park was uh, well endowed with uh, utilities from OG&E, uh, AT&T, and, and Cox, and most of them um, are they're in progress in removing them out of the park and putting them into uh, Harvey Avenue. And by doing that, uh, Harvey Avenue will be needed to be repaved uh, in the future. So uh, we're recommending that uh, uh, we have parallel parking uh, on the curb that was concrete, we're recommending we change that to asphalt just to make it easier to the <coughs> future repaving of, of Harvey. Uh, utility delays, so this is the big item. Um, we've had lots of challenges in the upper park and this has been the challenge for the lower park and the reason that so much progress has been made in the last month is it took uh, at least five months for the utility companies to remove their utilities from the park area which caused uh, significant delays to the contractor working there. The contractor win uh, construction did a great job in trying to work around these. They didn't stop work. Uh, so in fact, uh, they've, uh, they prevented the whole project from being delayed so much, it would push us into opening during winter, uh, the end of next year, which would be unfortunate. So uh, we, this is something that you know, sometimes happens along the way, but we're, we're almost out of the woods on this. Uh, there are still some utilities around the Cusack property inside the park that are currently being removed, uh, but we think we've got our hands around it now and the contractor is confident of, of making up the time. So there's a significant cost here of 223,867 and 69 cents. Uh, and an extension of time for 56 days, which will push, uh, we'll talk about this a little later, push the use of that production coming later. Uh, item number four is uh, stabilizing the subgrade along Robinson Avenue in the widening of Robinson Avenue that we're doing for the park to get parallel parking in. Uh, we discovered unsuitable uh, existing <coughs> soil, which was unable to be compacted. So we're having to, uh, what they call bridging it with uh, re plastic reinforcing and also more rock base. So that is a cost of 47,836 and 14 cents what we're uh, recommending for approval. And finally, uh, a little bit of uh, extra pavement to demolish at an intersection of Robinson Avenue and the former 12th Street, uh, just to ensure the uh, existing drain system still works in the street of $3,128, sorry, $3,128.36. So this is the, the total of change order number four with the credits and the additions of uh, $219,017.23. We have one uh, amendment 
Uh, as I said before, the Public Art Committee uh, is proceeding with an RFP, a call for artists, for the second uh, art piece in Sizzletail Park. Uh, so we know the location for it now, and we're, uh, we're trying to get ahead of ourselves and putting in underground uh, electrical to, to that location to prevent having to rip up pavement in a future date. Um, and the price for that is $6,000 and based on the prices that were in the bid. Uh, so uh, uh, Dave and his team have, have come to you for uh, three changes so far and two amendments. This represents change order number four and amendment number three, um, which uh, uh, made uh, a new revised contract total of uh, 22,608,748.44 with a total increase over the original contract of 1.52%. So we're still within our contingency. As I said before, the, uh, the second impact of the utility delays uh, of time, uh, five days for wet weather, but also an additional 56 days uh, due to the utilities. So our original uh, completion date uh, last time was uh, the 17th of May. It is recommending to be pushed that to July 17th, um, but um, we're assured by the contractors that we're hoping to get all of our planting in before it comes up in July. Um, so that's where we're at, and I'm happy to uh, answer any questions that you that you have. Thank you. Any questions for Gavin? I'll I'll, I'll note so for the our order proceeding here that in addition to his presentation, he has also presented what would be an item C as well, which is the approval of change order number four and amendment number three. David, did you have any comments you wanted to offer on this? Um, no, sir, uh, other than just want to make sure everybody understands that, that it extends the time period now, and, and we may come back at a later date. And this was discussed at the at the park subcommittee that we may come back at a later date to do an accelerated schedule that will cost some money to try and get it back to more towards springtime opening like it was originally planned. And the utilities, the, the, there's one group that's still not out of there, and... Uh, which group is that? AT&T is still not out of the, completely out of the area. Uh, so I can't guarantee that there won't be more, but as, as Gavin uh, explained, it, things are going pretty good right now. We've gotten to a point where it looks like the contractor is unimpeded. All right, are there questions for Gavin or David? Well, this Bob Neal on the, the questions on the uh, uh, working around the utilities, uh, the 223,000 some odd, uh, is that a, an actual cost supported by invoices or a negotiated amount or an estimated amount uh, for the, the work that, that has to be done? Yes, sir, it is. Uh, they're, they're all uh, detailed prices from the subcontractors uh, based on uh, <coughs> But you know the, the the way that this is framed is actually reimbursement. The, the the contractor has actually done this work, so it's quite well documented on what they spent it on. Um, there are three trades that are affected, um, and uh, which is probably about half the cost. And then the other half is just the ex extension of uh, general conditions with the GC to be on site for another fifty six days. Is there any way to get the uh, three utilities involved? Are they sharing any of this cost of relocation, or do they just bear their own cost of, uh, of, of relocation? So far, they have they have borne the the cost of relocation, but there's been no no discussion about any kind of reimbursement on this. Is that pretty much our standard practice for maps projects where we have issues like this that? We take care of the map side, and they're on their own to bear the cost of relocating the. <clears throat> Not always, but w we really haven't had a, a situation that was this dramatic as far as the delays. In the upper park, we had some, but we were able, um, because of the shape and nature of the park, they were able to work in some other areas. But this one affected pretty much the entire site, um, so it's it's been different. Um, you know, with the with the convention center and the relocation of that substation, all that relocation cost was lumped into one item, and and we paid for all of that. But typically, OGE 
bears their own relocation expenses. AT&T is a little different because of the way the law is. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Well, then we have before us uh, uh, item C under, under item four. Shall we approve it? Been moved by Bob Nealon that we approve it. It's been seconded by Zane Boatwright. I've been asked by staff to announce that uh, to members of the of the Citizens Advisory Board to for you to turn on your cameras when you vote. If you would do that, it would help us. Uh, and so, please turn on your cameras when you're when you're voting. All right, uh, it's been moved and seconded. Further discussion. And to cast your vote. Ms. Robinson Woods, can you see the vote? My 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 app isn't coming up to vote. I'm trying. Show she seconded it. So. I know. <laughs> How do you I vote? See that she just she just uh, deleted yes. my second and added hers, which is fine with me. <laughs> you might try to hit escape. Um, Mr. Hardig, on you are you online? I am, and uh, it just says waiting. Okay. How do you vote? Yes. The item has been passed and approved. Uh, let's move to item D. David? <clears throat> item D is recommend approval of change order number 39, project M3 C003, Mass 3. Convention Center 100 Mick Cornette Drive, a decrease of $18,566 in Ward 7. <clears throat> so there's three items on here. There's an ex additional expansion joint. So there's, um, at the corner of the building, there's a hard column. And that hard column is very rigid and the plaster moves. So because of the dissimilar materials and the thermal expansion there, we're getting a crack. So this is to add a, an expansion joint in that area. Uh, then item two is a credit of $71,294. So when we did uh, what, what started off as 4th Street, now it's McCornet Drive, the structures that are in there, we had about 150, well, it was $150,000 allowance, if you will, with the contractor that accounted for protective measures that he would have to do to protect the pavers that were already in place because they had to bring those cranes in there and the lifts. So putting down steel plates, plywood, uh, the, the coverings that they put down during painting and all that, they turned in receipts and showed us how much they spent and ultimately they spent about half, a little more than half of what that allowance was. So we're getting a $71,294 credit back from those activities. And then there's a street light disconnect, $1,300. There will be more activity at a, in a future change order regarding these lights, but the, the Project 180 street lights that are along Mick Cornett Drive are independent, and they're on a, on a, a sensor that, that senses when it gets dark. So those lights are so bright and doing their job that they drown out the, the accent lights from the structures that we put in there. So we're going to disconnect the lights that are actually on Mick Cornette Drive, put them on a separate circuit and, and work them with a switch that will coordinate with the new structures and the new lighting so that it's more effective. But right now all we're going to do is put in that separate circuit. We don't have uh, design or the materials yet to actually integrate that, but this, this gets it so that they can separate those lights. So 
Um, it's a lot to say that we're having a net decrease of $18,566, and this comes with the approval from the subcommittee. Questions for David? Shall we approve it? Been moved by Zane Boatwright that we approve it, seconded by Nathaniel Harding. Is there further discussion? Cast your vote. Mr. Dover, are you online? The item is passed and has been approved. So that we move to item E under Roman numeral four, David. Uh, item E is recommend approval of change order number five and amendment number six, projects M3-C010WC0979DC0303WC0970. PC 0728 Maps 3 South Robinson Avenue Reconstruction and Resurfacing, Waterline Replacement and Storm Sewer Relief Main, South Robinson Avenue between Oklahoma City Boulevard and I-40, an increase of $2,196.41, Wards 6 and 7. So this is a change order and an amendment. Remember that change orders are new items and amendments are items that were already included and we're just adjusting quantities. So there's light pole removal and reinstallation. It was uh, inadvertently left out of the plan, so there's 14000 for that. Knox boxes are the boxes that the fire department uses. So they have a master key for these boxes, and they can open up the box, and in that is a key for the bollards that they can remove. Remember that the walkway that's right in front of, of uh, Union Station is actually a fire lane disguised as a walkway. <clears throat> so that's for fire access. So we're adding those Knox boxes so they can remove the bollards. Uh, additional pedestrian signal poles, so ADA requirements uh, for the push buttons required poles to be added. There's a credit of sod. We didn't use as much grass along the project as what was uh, thought, and same thing with waterline fittings. Um, fittings being the 90 degree, the 45 degree, and the, and the connections and the water line. So there's a $10,000 credit on that. All that said, that as I previously mentioned, that it's a increase of only $2,196.41, and this comes with the approval from the subcommittee. Questions for David? Shall we approve it? It's been moved by D. Morales that we approve it, the second by Cecilia Robinson Woods. Is there further discussion? Cast your vote. Mr. Dover, you might want to hit star six. Yeah, I think I did. I, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Quite an ordeal, but I'm here and I vote yay. Did you get that? Yes, I do. Thank you. Mr. McDaniel, okay. I don't have your vote yet. The item has uh, been approved and passed. That takes us to item F. David? Uh, item F is recommend approval of change order number six. Project M3-R008, MAPS-3 Whitewater Facility, second floor renovation, 800 River Sport Drive, increase of $16,830.55, Ward 7. <clears throat> so there's three items on this. There's elevator pit modification. Remember that in the original building, we just built the shaft and, and the pit and didn't put the elevator in there, and, and we saved that until we did the renovation, and now we're at that point. Um, so that the, the pit had a, a portion of concrete that needed to be chipped out of there so that the elevator would actually fit. 
there's different contractors. Um, so that's six thousand six hundred fifty-seven dollars to chip out that concrete. It's wall cap replacement um, that we found was leaking, and that was due to the work that's do, done on the balconies uh, to give the fantastic views that you're going to see out there. And then there's lighting modification, almost $4,000 for some lights that are in the interstitial space in the ceiling. It was meant to light up some of that exposed mechanical, but it was actually too bright uh, and really brought all the attention to the, to the mechanical equipment instead of where it should be. So that's to modify those lights. Um, this comes with the approval from the subcommittee also. Questions for David? Shall we approve it? It's been moved by Zane Boatwright, seconded by Bob Nayland, that we approve the item. Is there further discussion? Cast your vote. Mr. Dower, how do you vote? Aye. <coughs> the item has passed and been approved. That brings us to item uh, G. Uh, item G is recommend approval of change order number three, project M3-H003C, Mass 3 Senior Health and Wellness Center number two, locker room expansion, 4021 South Walker Avenue, an increase of $24,681.80. It's in Ward 4. There are three items on this change order. There was some additional demolition for uh, some steel structure that was up on the roof that uh, was unknown. Floor alignment. So this is a, a self-leveling floor product that is put on there to make sure that the whole floor is level. So when you go from space to space, sometimes those floors vary a little bit based on the kind of tile that's in there or the, the floor finish, whether it's uh, exposed concrete or uh, tile. So this is to uh, level those floors so that they all align. Uh, remember that we're reclaiming some boiler room space and then we've added on a space out there and, and demo on some existing locker room. And then the boiler uh, control relocation, $4,000 to, to relocate the controls for the boiler. Um, this comes with the ap approval of those present at the Wellness Center subcommittee. Questions for I, David? I'll move the resolution or the amendment. This is Mike Dover. All right. Yes, sir. It's been moved by Mike Dover and seconded by Zane Boatwright, if I'm reading my chart right. So we do have a motion and a second. Yes. Is there further discussion? Cast your vote. Mr. Dover, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Thank you. The item has been passed and approved. That takes us to item H. <coughs> Pardon me. <The> item, <coughs> item H is recommend approval of resolution ratifying and approving addendum number one, project M3-H005, MAPS 3 Senior Health and Wellness Center number four, 13660 Southwestern Avenue, extending time to award contract, awarding contract to W.L. McNatt and Company, base bid plus alternate nine, $13,946,000, approving contract and bonds, and authorizing use of excess collections and or interest from the Oklahoma City Capital Improvement Sales Tax Fund in the amount of $1,246,270 to fund the contract. This is in Ward 5. So this is the uh, fourth and final of this program, Senior Wellness Center. <clears throat> the, uh, the bids came in very close. <clears throat> I will uh, bring your attention to the bid of Shiloh Enterprises, which we are uh, 
we are claiming as, as non-responsive. It's obvious that they made a mistake. They've obviously left off a zero. All the bids are in the $13,600,000. And if you add a zero to their bid, it would be $13,760,000. Uh, we discussed that with them. That is certainly the, the situation. And they've asked that, that uh, they be declared un unresponsive on that. So W. McNatt would be the low bidder including alternate nine. W. McNatt is uh, the contractor who built Wellness Centers 1 and 2, and they are also building Wellness Center 3. So that'll make W. McNatt the Wellness Center contractor of MAPS 3, uh, getting all the, the projects. Uh, point out also that we're asking for excess collections and interest money from the program of $1,246,270. Um, Earlier in the meeting, we discussed that there is uh, $4,342,667 in the program unallocated. Uh, we're asking for this because we we were <clears throat> bidding this right as prices just skyrocketed. Um, I think everybody's heard about the increased cost in lumber, increased cost in steel, concrete, oil, all those things. <clears throat> and we we talked about the idea of rebidding this, making some changes, um, but even every day as we discussed this, prices just kept going up and going up. And we talked to some of the contractors and AGC related people, and they said this is this is as good as it's going to get for quite some time. Um, and even the a couple of the bidders who weren't low bidders said we you should you should award this now because it's not going to get better. So that's why we come to you asking um, to ask council for the additional um, funds in, in collections and interest. So those that were present at the at the senior wellness subcommittee meeting uh, recommend that we send this on. So all that said, I'll turn it back over. I wanted to add, uh, I did talk today with the head of the meeting to uh, clarify in my own mind whether the use of these funds from excess collections would uh, would uh, change in any way the allocations that we had discussed several months ago about the excess money. And uh, as you've already seen from David's explanation, we have unallocated money and, and interest that would uh, cover this item so we would not be adversely impacting any of the previous allocations. Am I understanding that right, David? Yes, sir. All right, are there other questions for David? All right, shall we approve it? It's been moved by Bob Nalen and seconded by Zane Boatwright that we approve the item. Further discussion? Cast your vote. Mr. Dover, how do you vote? Aye. <coughs> Mr. Harding, how do you vote? Mr. Harding, you're muted. The item has been passed and approved. Uh, that takes us then to item I, David. Uh, item I is recommend approval of settlement agreement project M3-S007B, MAPS 3 Transit Modern Streetcar Mainline Special Track Work, credit of $290,920. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> so let me take you back and remind you of how we did the streetcar. We had several different contracts. We had a contract for the, for the cars. We had a contract for the the maintenance facility we had a contract to build the main line but we bought the track and the special track work separate <clears throat> because we knew it was a long lead time 
we, and we knew what we wanted and, and we didn't feel like we needed the contractor to add another 15% onto it. So we purchased these separately and, and the special track work is the curves and the switches. Um, specifically, I can remember we've got one at, at Sheridan and Hudson and there's a cross at 4th and Robinson in, in various places where the, the tracks diverge. <clears throat> so if you remember, we had significant problems with the contractor delivering on time. We had a contract that stipulated when they would deliver their products and the mainline contractor was relying on those delivery dates for his scheduling. And when they didn't show up, it it messed up his schedule and, and his sequencing and caused us a lot of problems. If you recall, we had to go in and, and pay the, the contractor to to do some temporary asphalt to cover up some of those rails that were sticking out because we didn't have the switches to to attach to them and keep going. So we uh, we sent a claim to uh, I'm going to I'm going to refer to them as Boslo. That's a, that's who we we talk about all the time. It, they've they've sold and changed hands several times here, so I'm just going to say Boslo. Uh, contacted Boslo and told them that we felt like we had damages of about four hundred ninety nine thousand dollars due to contractor claims and and extra materials and things that we had to do through uh, discussions that came down to about $356,000 of, of things that we felt like we could uh, prove and things that, that were definitely legitimate as far as the delays of the contractor. Then we, we went into some uh, settlement discussions and what you have here is where we ended up with a settlement of $290,920, which is approximately 82% of that of that amount that, that we uh, landed on. We're still holding about $53,000 of their monies to get this done. Once this is done, we'll release those, pay them, and then they're going to send us a check for $290,920. I feel like this is a very good um, agreement. And, and a good settlement, and uh, feel like the city is is getting what what we deserve back from from what's transpired. Um, so with that, I'll try to answer any questions if you have any. Questions for David? David, this is Bob Neal, and uh, if we were <clears throat> Jimmy released the fifty three thousand tomorrow. Uh, is there some mechanism to ensure that we'll receive the, uh, the the funds back that they've agreed to pay working with an international company and collection could be a real problem if uh, they renege on the agreement? Right, so it's, it's, it's a little more um, complicated than that. So we have a contract with a local American company out of, I believe they're out of Tennessee, and they have the contract with the foreign company. So the agreement says that, that the local company, the American company will pay us and then they'll pay. All, all that is, is outlined in the agreement as to how that will go down once this is approved by council. The agreement, I didn't know that it was very comforting. Thank you. Other questions for David? Shall we approve it? been moved by Dean Morales, seconded by Bob Nalen, that we approve this. Cast your vote. Mr. Dover, how do you vote? Aye. <clears throat> Ms. Robinson Woods, do you see the vote? The item has passed and been approved. That moves us to item J, 
under Roman numeral four, and I want to uh, make mention here, uh, there have been a good number of people who have asked to be heard on this particular item, and so I'm proposing this process. Uh, we're going to ask David and his staff first to give us uh, kind of a context for which to consider the comments and to uh, give us the background of what brings this, uh, this item forward. Then our colleague, uh, Mike Adams, has asked to be heard. He has made uh, a written and, a, and will make a presentation uh, and comments about that today. Uh, we have also had uh, four uh, citizens asked to be heard. So the, the process will be, we'll hear from staff, we'll hear from Michael Adams, subcommittee members will be, of course, uh, allowed to ask questions at any time uh, from any of the speakers. Uh, at the conclusion of Michael's presentation and the questions from subcommittee members, we will then move to the citizens who have asked to be heard on this particular item. And they will, they will be given a maximum of three, three minutes each, and they will be uh, called on in this order. And I'm, I'm mentioning this so they will have time to think through when they will be heard. The first one we will hear from is uh, Mr. Zenefon Warrior Jr. The second one is Rhonda Mitchell. The third one is Steve Petty. And the fourth one is Jennifer or Janine Pointer. So we will hear first then, if that process seems agreeable to everyone, then we will begin with uh, uh, David and his staff setting the context for this discussion. David? <clears throat> yes, sir. So this item is recommend the use of $3,400,000 in excess maps three trail funds. So I just want to emphasize this is not program funds. This is funds left over from the, the successful construction of the trails. In order to give you context, I'm, I'm asking Jason Cotton if he could uh, give a quick presentation just to let you see uh, where these projects are located and where this money's coming from. So I'd like to turn it over to Jason. Thank you, David. Uh, good morning, board members. Good to see everybody this morning. Um, I am glad that uh, this is our last virtual meeting. <laughs> so I'm going to try to share my screen here real quick. If you'll give me just one second. And I just want to ask, hopefully for the last time this year, if you can see my screen. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Yes, we have it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So yeah, I'm, I, as David mentioned, I'm just going to try to give the board a little bit of context. This conversation has been going on for a while now, and so we've given uh, mm -hmm. various presentations to the to the uh, sidewalk and trail subcommittee uh, uh, over the you know last several months. I'm I, what I'm at, what I've actually got for us here this morning is actually a presentation that we gave the subcommittee in March, and so I'm just going to flip through this real quick again just to give you some context. So we we uh, mm -hmm. in March we presented just kind of a, a summary of all of the trail work that had been done under the MAPS 3 program. And so you can see the, the four phases of work here along with uh, where the budgets and obligated dollars and everything were in March of this year. Um, one, of the, one of the things that's kind of drugged this conversation out a little bit are, is the repair work that needed to happen at uh, West River Trail. And so we were trying to, we were in the process of designing that work. We were trying to get it bid and constructed. And so, we really needed that last piece to kind of fall into place so that we could figure out what we were dealing with in terms of what what dollars that we had available to us to do uh, additional trail improvements so obviously we're down the road on that work and so it allowed us to, to move forward with some additional thoughts on what to spend those dollars on um and so if, this is really just a summary slide explaining you know we were to go back and add up all the mileage of the trail work that we had done to date, and it's about 29.2 miles. You can see that I basically just summed up all the budget and obligation numbers from each one of the phases. And so uh, as of March, that gave us about $3.8 million left. I think that number might be slightly different um, today, but that's where we were. So uh, just doing some simple math, you get about um, $1.22 million a mile, which would indicate we've got about, we could 
potentially do as much as about 3.1 miles with the dollars that were uh, available to us at that time. So as I said, this conversation uh, has gone on for some time. And so when we presented to the, to the subcommittee in March, we started the conversation, you know, we gave them this context and then we kind of circled back and said, these were our previous recommendations. And so these were, I think, some recommendations in February. And so you can see the uh, uh, two connections up at the Katy Trail, Katy Trail and Northeast 10th, one at the Katy Trail and Northeast 23rd. You can see our uh, estimated costs there. Uh, uh, for each one of those projects. The Air Depot, we're referring to it as the Air Depot Trail, but it's essentially some improve, uh, trail improvements uh, on, along Air Depot. I think it's between Southeast 59th and South 64th, but I could be wrong. It might be 74th, I can't remember. Uh, but you can see it there identified on the map just south and west of Tinker Air Force Base. Uh, and then uh, what we were referring to at that time as the South May Trail, I think it may be referred to as the Early Line Trail in the memo that was prepared for the board uh, this afternoon. But that is essentially the four projects, I guess it's uh, one, two, four projects that we identified or, uh, in February when we, we came to, to present these to the board. And so at that board meeting in February, we started, got a lot of comments from the subcommittee, or I'm sorry, this was the subcommittee meeting in March. Um, Oh, actually, it was February. The, the comments that we received from subcommittee really focused around connections between the Oklahoma River Trail and the Grand Boulevard Trail. And so uh, it really, the whole conversation kind of centers around this area of Oklahoma City. And so you can see we're, we're right adjacent to I-40 and I-35. And the conversation was really, we need a connection here. Like we've got all of these trail improvements that take us all across the city, but there's no way to get from, from one trail system to the other. And so this this small connection is really, really critical. And so we spent a lot of time uh, talking about that internally. We reached out to the Parks Department um, and had a conversation with them about it. And what we found was actually that they were in the process of doing what they are referring to as the Greenway Trail. And so um, you can see we've identified it here in kind of this uh, red color. It shows the general alignment of the improvements associated with that trail. So. When we first started talking with them and we realized this, we thought, well, this is, we've solved our problems. The problem that we still have though, is that uh, one is the entire uh, project has not um, been bid. And so to, I guess, kind of put a little bit finer point on this, I'm gonna break this up into segments and try to explain it a, a piece at a time. So segment A, when we approached parks in uh, February and March, had just been bid and the bids came in over budget. And so uh, at that time, Parks informed us that, hey, we're going back to the drawing board. We're in the process of redesigning this. We're going to rebid it. And so that is the red uh, that you see here on this slide. These, the other two segments, segment B1 and segment B2, um, are another portion of this larger project. Uh, and so this was the part that they, that Parks felt that they could potentially use, have use some help on and so um, as i said segment a bids are received it's in redesign our understanding as of right now is that is still in redesign it's anticipated to be bid on the summer um, you can see segment one uh, b1 total estimate cost estimate of about 1.2 million dollars and so parks had secured a tap grant to help fund that but they don't have the matching funds for it and so you'll notice in the in the memo that was provided to the board today, the six hundred thousand dollars that's that's indicated, that those dollars if provided would be the match for this grant and would provide all of the funding for segment B one. Segment B two is also about one point two million dollars. There's actually a, a various funding sources that are involved in that segment, but if in fact the board decides to move forward with the funding for the Greenway Trail, in reality, probably segment B one and B two would probably all be bid as one large project. Um, we, we anticipate, I think as of right now, that uh, if we were to move forward with, uh, with this project or, or uh, providing MAPS refunding for that project, that the project would likely be uh, administered by the Oklahoma City Parks Department and Oklahoma City Public Works. So that's really kind of where we finish the conversation. David, I don't know if there's anything else that you'd like for me to uh, inform the board on, but that, that really kind of tells the story, I think, a little bit. Yes, sir, thank you. Anything else you wanted to add, David? No, sir. All right. Uh, with that, I'm going to call on our um, colleague, Mike um, Adams. He has some comments he'd like to be considered. Mike? 
Thank you, Tom. David, can you display the map that was presented at the Trails and Sidewalks Subcommittee yesterday that shows the existing we, trails, funded trails, and additional planned trails? Which um, which one of those maps? The one the one that Jeff had that it showed the existing trails, funded trails, and additional planned trails. It was in Jeff's presentation yesterday. Okay. Is that it? Yes, that's it. So, so this map, uh, as I said, was prepared and presented by Jeff Butler with the city planning director. And, and as I understand it, I'm going to see bike walk. And it shows in green the existing um, bike trail system we have. And it shows in red uh, some additional funded projects being funded by um, 27, 2017 bond issues, um, the uh, um, Better Street Safer City, and various grants and things as Jason just talked about. And I think if anybody looks at this map would see that the southwest part of Oklahoma City is underserved by the existing trail system. Ward 5 in particular, which is one of the most densely populated wards in Oklahoma City, is the only ward that has no bike trails. Although Southwest Oklahoma City is, is underserved, it is not undeserving. We have families, we ride bikes, we enjoy the outdoors, we are conscious of our health and the health of our families, and we are entitled to the same public amenities as any other area of the city. I think this was recognized in the original MAPS 3 implementation plan because there was a trail identified for South Oklahoma City that would connect South Oklahoma City to the rest of the city's trail system. Somehow over the years, that trail has disappeared. There's an item on today's agenda coming from the Trails and Sidewalk Committee recommending allocation of the remaining 3.4 million in MAPS 3 Trails Fund, and it still does not address South Oklahoma City needs. I have made a pitch the last couple of months to the Trails and Sidewalk Subcommittee for them to follow up on the promise in MAPS 3 to build a trail in South Oklahoma City. They are recommending the remaining funds be allocated elsewhere. Months ago, when it became apparent that the plan MAPS 3 Southside Trail was at risk, I was under the impression that it would be addressed with the 2017 bond issues, Better Street, Safer City sales tax, or other available trail funding. It, it had been identified as a priority trail uh, in MAPS 3, and so I just assumed that, that it, it would be picked up in one of those other projects. But I however, at yesterday's meeting, when Jeff Butler presented this plan and, and went through the, the list of planned and funded projects, it became apparent that there's another 25 million in funded sales projects from these other sources. And again, none of these planned funded projects address a trail connection to Southwest Oklahoma City. This map shows in purple a, a trail going south, basically from Woodson Park and connecting with the Grand River Trail and going south and connecting with Early Wine Park in Southwest Oklahoma City, which is the Southwest Oklahoma City's major regional park. And it also shows a trail running east and west from that trail connecting over to Lake Stanley Draper. So these, pro these projects are in the Bike Walk Oklahoma City plan. They're just not being addressed with any funding. As indicated by David Todd, there are still several million dollars in excess unallocated funds in MAPS 3, not including funds that are remaining in some of the subcommittees. I would like for the Citizen Advisory Board, board to table action on the recommendation from the trail subcommittee today and send it back to them with a request that they explore how to fulfill the promise to build a trail in South Oklahoma City. My thought is that with three to four million of unallocated program funds, along with their 3.4 million remaining funds, at least five or six miles of trail could be developed to connect South Oklahoma City with the existing trail system. I think it is important that they explore this opportunity before the remaining funds are allocated. Debbie, can you put up the trail analysis map? This map, that one, thank you. This map shows, um, shows a trail along South May Avenue between Woodson Park and Early Wine Park. That's the trail that was in Bike Walk OKC and also a trail extending east along Southwest 104th to the Moore city limits. 
This would connect residents of South Oklahoma City to the Grand Boulevard Trail, which then connects to the River Trail, which then connects to the rest of the Oklahoma City Trail System. As shown on this map, within, within one mile of either side of the trail, 23,000 households would gain access to the Oklahoma Trail System. This trail would serve 21 schools, one college, and 10 parks within one mile of it. And within three miles, there would be 58,000 households, 52 schools, three colleges, and 31 parks served. The residents of Oklahoma City, including those in South Oklahoma City, have continued to support the trail system in bond issues, better streets, safer cities, and in maps four, but we continue to ignore a whole quadrant of the city. I fear that support will erode. It is my hope that a trail system that serves all of Oklahoma City can continue to be developed. There's another reason we should consider investing the excess funds in South Oklahoma City. Anything south of Southwest 89th Street is in Cleveland County. In the past, Cleveland County has partnered with the city on projects in which the city provides material and the Cleveland County construction crews do the work. Ward 5 Councilor David Greenwell has contacted Cleveland County Commissioners Rod Cleveland and Harold Harrelson, both of whom expressed an interest in the willingness to participate with the city of Oklahoma City in developing a trail across northern Cleveland County, connecting Lake Stanley Draper Trail to the existing OKC trail system. This is a unique opportunity to leverage funds and build more miles of trail than would otherwise be possible. Councilor Greenwell has also spoken to the Moore City Manager because a three or four mile portion of the trail to connect to Lake Stanley Draper would cross more. The Moore City Manager also expressed an interest in and willingness to, for the city of Moore to partner on this project. David, can you put up the other, the last map that I sent you that uh, reflects the original MAPS 3 implementation plan? So, so this is a map prepared by, by ADG uh, 10 years ago, and, and it, it shows on this map the, the pr priority of projects um, to be considered in MAPS 3. And you can see four projects in red, and you don't see the legend there, but they're identified as priority trails, MAPS 3 priority trails. And that includes a trail, basically, as we just discussed, going south from Woodson Park, down to Early One Park. It's, it's trail number four over here. It's identified as the airport trail. After 12 years and a budget of over $40 million, the residents of South Oklahoma City are still waiting for their turn in MAPS 3. Considering that the original MAPS 3 campaign literature and early plans included bike trails in Southwest Oklahoma City, it's time to address those commitments. I've been thinking about why the trail needs in Southwest Oklahoma City have been ignored. I don't believe there was any grand conspiracy. I believe the needs of Southwest Oklahoma City have, were recognized 10 or 12 years ago when the MAPS 3 implementation plan was developed because that plan included the airport trail as a connection to the existing trail system. The cost overruns on the built trails and the need to repair the washout on the West River Trail have depleted the MAPS 3 trails budget. I'm not criticizing any of those decisions. I voted for them. But I think we still have an obligation to, to connect South Oklahoma City to the existing trail systems. So why isn't that being addressed with the future funding resources? Why wasn't it addressed in the 2017 bond issue or Better Street Safer City? I believe that when the, when the next funding source for the trails was developed, that being the 2017 bond issue, there was no need to address Southwest Oklahoma City because those needs were being addressed in MAPS 3. Likewise, when the trail projects for Better Streets and Safer City were being developed, there was still the assumption that MAPS 3 was going to address the Southwest Oklahoma City Trail System. I feel we, the MAPS 3 Advisory Board, have an obligation to find a means to complete the trail connection to Southwest Oklahoma City. I would like to move that we send this recommendation back to the Trail Subcommittee to consider the inequity of the existing trail system and explore how the city can take a step toward meeting the promise in the original MAPS 3 implementation plan for a trail connection in South Oklahoma City. If they want to ask us for additional funding for trail connection in South Oklahoma City, I think we need to find the funds. I would be one vote on the advisory board to reallocate the available MAPS 3 funds. Anybody have any questions? Well, let's think about this a minute. I, I believe that Mike has made a motion, and uh, we're going to give the citizens who have asked uh, an opportunity to, to comment, we'll give them an opportunity to do that. 
Uh, and we can do that under discussion, I guess, of Mike's motion. Is there a Chair second to the motion? Yes. Uh, yes. Are we going to have time for discussion? Yes, we are. We're going to take all the time it takes on this. Thank you. Uh, uh, but we do have a motion that Mike has made to table the item. Is there a second to that? I second. All right. It's been moved and seconded that we table this motion uh, under the under the heading of discussion on this motion. I'm going to call on uh, Mr. Warrior a citizen who was the first one to ask to be heard. Mr. Warrior, are you there? Um, Mr. Chairman, this is Zane Boatwright. Um, yes. Shouldn't uh, MAPS Advisory Board uh, members have an opportunity to comment on this also, or do you want us to wait until after the citizens have? Well, we can do it either way. Uh, I'm, if, you, if you prefer, uh, I'd definitely be glad to have you all uh, comment first, but I thought it might be helpful to hear what the citizens said as well. I, I what do you prefer? All right. Well, then, if, if everyone's in agreement, then I'm going to ask the citizens to comment, and then we will, every, uh, every advisory board member will be given a chance. Okay? All right. Mr. Warrior, are you ready for your comments? You have three minutes. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, we're appreciating and thank you for my opportunity to give my opinion uh, concerning this particular matter. Uh, the Katy Trails is uh, those connections that have been been discussed is going to be very helpful to connect and mobilize the residents in the northeast neighborhoods and uh, the various communities uh, throughout the uh, area. Uh, I believe the Katy Trails uh, checks all the boxes. Uh, I've uh, attended uh, over the last several months the uh, Trails and Sidewalks uh, subcommittee uh, that uh, that we've had and in, in involved with discussions with that. And during those various meetings, it was suggested that I, I talk with uh, staff uh, about the big issue. So I have spent a lot of time talking with the uh, Parks and Recreation Department, uh, the Planning Department, and some, some uh, discussions with, uh, with the... Uh, Public Works, and have uh, sent some emails to the uh, the Maps Department uh, with that. Uh, as I as I looked at that and looked at these uh, various trails, is talked about that my uh, experience is trails and walking and and uh, jogging. Uh, some 30 years back, uh, usually it was uh, a uh, habit I would uh, have of uh, going around a track. Is my idea of of, of walking uh, e events and four times around the track is is a mile. But it's, uh, it's uh, excellent that our, our city has uh, so many uh, trail opportunities to actually uh, walk and, and actually get a chance to get out into the nature uh, with that. Uh, the Katy Trails is a, uh, is a very, uh, is very full of nature, and it's a natural habitat. It uh, makes it uh, really feel like you're uh, taking a country walk within the, within the city area for that. I live about a half a mile from the uh, north connection, north part of the Katy Trail connection, on Northeast uh, Boulevard, uh, the same place where the Deep Fork Trail is going to be connected to the uh, Katy Trail and go back to the west. So that's around the Cowboy Hall of Fame. Uh, the trail then continues uh, east in uh, front of the uh, Science Museum, the Oklahoma City Zoo, the uh, Lincoln Park uh, Zoo Lake, and then it uh, continues uh, down south to that particular area. Uh, at that location there in Northeast, uh, Grand Boulevard 50, if uh, there is, uh, as I understand, there's going to be some uh, pretty good uh, softball that's going to be played over the last next couple of weeks, uh, some fantastic uh, uh, college and, and world athletes. 30 seconds uh, remaining. With that. But uh, as we go down particular trails uh, with that, uh, as you go down to the uh, south part of the trail all the way down to 4th Street, there are a number of neighborhoods that uh, aren't able to make connections with the trails starting at 36. There are about five or six uh, neighborhoods there with that. I think it would be uh, very uh, advantageous for the community to be able to be connected to the trail because there's really no way for them to get on it uh, except for the beginning or at the end of it. At the northeast, uh, 23rd Street is going to be the connection that will be located where the Clara Lupa Corridor begins with that particular area. Uh, also, the uh, second connection is down there by Northeast 10th Street, uh, which uh, would be an excellent connection to uh, connect those communities and those particular neighborhoods, Carbondale, the uh, 
and the uh, Edwards edition, and then also the uh, improvements that have been made by the city with the uh, new recreational park, and then also the Jimmy Stewart uh, clubhouse, particularly with that. Uh, this also will be in conjunction with a, another uh, community uh, park that's being planned with the nearby uh, church, uh, Tabitha Baptist Church. They are connecting a, uh, or planning a pocket park. There will be an excellent opportunity to be able to continue the wellness at that park and then extend it over to the connection there at the Northeast 10th Street area there. The owners of those two properties, that 23rd and, and 10th Street, of uh, those particular land are, would be uh, ones that I think the uh, owners would be very cooperative in working with them and uh, securing the uh, necessary uh, right of way to complete that various track trails with that area. Of course, these trails, through I just described, as has been explained by the uh, uh, tree canopy study that was done by the David Group uh, several years ago, this is a very uh, scenic tree line area. It's not going to require any type of additional landscaping because of all those natural trees, but there are a lot of rolling hills that is going to ex have some excavation uh, issues that will be uh, need to be addressed. I have uh, reached out to the uh, county commissioner, Kerry Bloomert, to uh, talk with her about uh, a joint venture with the city and the county on construction of those two uh, connections uh, with that area as uh, something we can work with. I know there's something that's been done with the past with that. I uh, did talk with, uh, I did the opportunity to talk with uh, Ms. Bloomer a uh, couple weekends ago uh, concerning the particular cage trail, and she was uh, very receptive to talking with... Mr. Warrior, let me interrupt you just a moment to say I apologize for interrupting, but you're well past your time, so if you would finalize your comments, we have others to be heard, and I want you to know I appreciate your comments, but if you would finalize them, we need to move on. Thank you. Go ahead. I, I, yes, sir. And the only thing I was just going to find by saying is that this uh, Katy Trail and hopefully the uh, excess funds could be used to construct these uh, these uh, connections. And it, uh, I think it would be a, a cooperative agreement that could be worked out with the pocket park that's going to be developed, the county commissioner, and then the uh, city council on helping this, uh, helping this uh, come together. Thank you for your time. I yield back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, uh, next speaker is Rhonda Mitchell. Rhonda? We, we, don't, we don't show her uh, being connected, so I'm going to move. Yes. Mr. Chairman, this is Steve Petty. I'm, I'm uh, representing the Lynn Institute and also our partner, Tabitha Baptist Church, if I may. Yes, Steve, you're next in line. Thank you have three you. minutes. Thank Go right ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. My name is Steve Petty. I'm the president of the Lynn Institute. We are working with uh, Tabitha Baptist Church on the Pocket Project, Pocket Park Project. We had just heard about uh, the Katy uh, Trails option, and that's why we uh, were asked to come and speak on behalf of Tabitha and Lynn. Uh, we have been working, we as in the Lynn Institute have been working in Northeast Oklahoma City and across the county for several years and specifically with Tabitha and I'm happy to say with uh, Councilperson Nice uh, and Commissioner Bloomert to help find ways to beautify and uh, increase access in Northeast Oklahoma City. This project was uh, part of a, a, a plan that we were looking to beautify the area. Tabitha Baptist Church has three lots that they have designated that they would like to use for this pocket park project. Uh, so we have visited with the community all around that area to get their thoughts on how we would do this, what they would like to see as a part of this project and what we were gonna do to find funding. So the Lynn Institute with our partners uh, received uh, funding from the Oklahoma City Community Foundation, Oklahoma City Beautiful, Keep Oklahoma Beautiful, Total Environment and several others to make this happen. Uh, so we're excited to be partnering on this because this is something we've been trying to do in Northeast Oklahoma City uh, for quite a while. But our partners, everything that we're wanting to do in that area is to look to beautify. And again, we were just told about this Katy Trail options yesterday. That's why we're here representing Tabitha and they apologize that they couldn't be on uh, the call today. But the main thing we're looking at is ways that we can do what the community is wanting for that area. 
the pocket park concept is just a small park and our, our partners with Oklahoma City Community Foundation and Oklahoma City Beautiful have been phenomenal at helping us try to realize this. So what we're doing is bringing all the partners together, the resources, so we can find ways to uh, promote things for children, the parents, grandparents, seniors, and we'd love to be able to, if it is decided, to connect the park with any of the MAPS 3, Katy Trails, or any other at that time. We are looking again for ways to beautify that area and beyond Northeast Oklahoma City to move into Southeast and Southwest Oklahoma City to do similar parks and replicate this pilot project. So that's all I have to say. And my colleague Janine Pointer will finish us up if that's okay, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Petty. Then uh, we call on uh, Janine Pointer. Janine, you have three minutes. Good morning. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to describe for you the pocket park so that you get a sense of what we're doing there and what's going to be made available in that pocket park setting. This is a very innovative and new approach to not only beautifying and um, bringing that to a community, but also to expand how you provide resources in a community and how you build community within um areas uh, that have access needs and, and uh, just even quality of life needs. So within the pocket park, that whole space will be beautified and landscaped and um, structured to host uh, a variety of activities, including uh, mobile health and vision screenings, food distributions, outdoor fitness opportunities that would be wonderful to connect to the trails. Also, uh, we are looking at uh, a small stage in that area so that uh, education programs can be brought to the community in an outdoor setting, concerts, um, you know, children's programs. Also the picnic and gathering space so that while families are out and being physically active and, and looking at their um, exercise capabilities, they can also uh, take a minute and sit there and enjoy family time together. Some pet services. Um, these are all services that many of the residents in the Edwards, Carverdale and Garden Oaks communities that surround this area around Tabitha do not always have access to. And so, um, that's the reason we've expanded it from, from only being a park, which will be wonderful and beautiful, but to being a place that people can come to, to meet the host of needs that they have and, and that the church can play a large part in building their uh, community that they serve, as well as the community that Lynn and Oklahoma City Beautiful and the other partners serve as well. Even the landscaping that will take place there will be provide educational experiences in the STEM area for children. So um, we would be very excited to be a part of a, a trail connection so that as people are exercising, they also have a place to come and rest and enjoy and be part of community. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, Janine. We appreciate your comments as well. Uh, we're now going to open it up to members of the uh, advisory board. I'm going to start with uh, Councilwoman Nice, followed by Zane Boatwright, and then anyone else that wants to be heard can do that. Uh, Councilwoman Nice, it, you're, you're to be heard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess I have a couple of questions because I'm kind of confused. I sit on the Trails Advisory Committee, um, but we also have a Trails and Sidewalks Committee. Um, so I'm concerned as far as the meeting that we had with our trails advisory committee, this, this topic was not discussed at our last meeting um, and why we have overlapping of these types of conversations if we are truly benefiting trails um, for, for our city. So that's my first question that I'm not sure if someone can answer for me. And this is, I guess, the main reason why I'm concerned about it now, uh, because we're having this type of conversation pertaining to trails. Um, and again, both of these are part of MAPS 3. Um, Ma'am. Yes. Th this is Zane Boatwright. I am chairman of the MAPS 3 uh, Trails and Sidewalk Subcommittee. And we meet every month. Uh, in connection with MAPS 3 subcommittee meetings. Um, and um, 
so I'm not I'm not sure what other committees you're you're referring to, unless you mean uh, the the city trails uh, committee. Is is this not Maps Three Trails Advisory Committee that I sit on, or is it Oklahoma City Advisory Trails Committee that I sit on? I mean, either way, um, I, I just it seems as if there will be a cohesiveness in these conversations to talk about at least what's what's to be expected with trails, and um, maybe somebody can help me with that part of the conversation because I'm, I'm quite confused when we have many different pieces of our puzzle uh, that we want to bring to vote on or consider and there are so many working parts because I, I like everyone else that you just heard from I have a concern when we are trying to connect Katie Trail and it's not going to cost us much to do that um, and when we're looking at Greenway Trail, which actually connects that south side of our city um, in the, the northern part of the south side of our city, uh, that also sits in, in the area that I serve. Um, so I'm, I'm just trying to understand what what and where huh, I, I may have missed part of the, these conversations. So let me try to help you, Councilwoman. It, it is complicated because there are a lot of groups working um, on trails right now. You've got Better Street Safer City is doing some, the bond issue is doing some, and then we've been doing some. So we have this excess money and we got with planning staff and asked them what could we do that would uh, dovetail into what they're doing. We're not just out rogue doing our own thing. So we met with their staff and, and found projects that we uh, could afford and that the subcommittee wanted to do uh, a lot of connections stuff and some of the connections that they wanted to do we were able to to find out that those were already underway um, and i can't recall exactly what those were but one of them that was of interest was the the greenway area and we were able to partner with public works and parks on this project and provide that matching funds so that's been, I think, a, a real win for us on that. Um, if you look at one of the maps that, that uh, Mr. Adams had me pull up, that the, the Air Depot Trail is one of those trails that's listed on the map as unfunded, so we would essentially be funding that. And then there's a whole lot of other options in there that we've worked with them to put together. Now, probably why you haven't seen it on any kind of trails advisory committee is because it's still an undecided option out there right now. And, and I'm sure that, that once this group decides what's, what might be happening and the council decides ultimately what will happen, that it'll come back to that of great news that MAPS is able to fund some of these, these projects. But that's why it's, it's a little, uh, confusing, and you're right. There are a lot of moving parts, and we've been we've been trying to deal with all those moving parts for several months. That's why it's taken us a while to to get to this point. Well, let me let me say I this. I, I understand I understand what you're saying as far as um, the subcommittee, but again, this was approved uh, at the recommendation of the subcommittee, so it seemed as if, in my opinion, it would have went to a trails advisory to also say and give their stamp of approval, if I'm not mistaken, on that. So I guess my, my concern and my question now, because when I look at even the trailways and the wayfinding that we are working on for trails, isn't that part of MAPS, fund, MAPS 3 money? Or am I, am I mistaken we, when I'm thinking about it? We did uh, provide some money for, for some of that. We provided some money for uh, matching on the, the grand connection, and then we did provide some money or are providing some money for some of the amenities. But okay. that, was, that was approved several, a couple of years ago. Okay, so clearly that they may have happened before I got here, but since I've been on trails committee, um, I understand as far as the wayfinding, to my knowledge, where those funds are coming from. So it seems, again, as if I may be confused on what we're looking at and how this funding is being spent in the places that it needs to go. So my suggestion and my hope with us deferring this is that we will look at 
itemizing all of the trails that need additional funding that have been funded and that have been used, the money that has been used anything through MAPS 3 funding and other ways that we will be paying for some of these other trails. So we, as a, a MAPS 3 advisory committee can better understand what is happening and where these dollars are going ourselves because it's quite confusing um, for me to say yes uh, for these things when I know again, I'm trying to get some other things done as far as trail connection in other places that we have been, in my opinion, uh, waiting a little too long to do as far as connections, just as you heard Mr. Adams say. Um, we, need, we need connection all over our city, but it seems as if we all need to sit and look at all of these things together in that type of presentation for us to understand where all of these funds are coming from and how all of these trails will be connected um, with, with funding from wherever it is. So that's my suggestion for our next meeting. Um, for us and me to to give my honest vote on uh, being able to make sure I'm doing best not only by my residents but by this city on how we're putting this funding to use uh, for places that may need it the most. Okay. First of all, uh, I'd like to I'd like to point out and make a distinction here that what we're talking about is Maps Three funding and what you're talking about is not Maps Three. I would like to say, let me say this, while it is, I am talking about MAPS3 funding, but I'm talking about overall funding, because it's important for us to also understand where all of these funds are coming from. So therefore, we understand where MAPS3 funding is supposed to go. So I, I would disagree in saying this is something that we would all need understanding on because we do have money from trails going everywhere. But yes, in order for us to make an informed decision for MAPS 3 money, we need to know where all the money is. So that's my suggestion in this uh, for me to better understand as uh, an advisory board member how I can best serve with this MAPS, MAPS 3 funding. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, this is Lane Boatwright. And, and as chairman of the subcommittee for the trails and sidewalks, I'd like to kind of discuss uh, both Ms. Nice's comments and, and Mr. Uh, Adam. It's nice, Councilwoman nice. nice. I'm sorry, apologize. Um, so yesterday, the subcommittee, um, we put forward a, 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 an issue to David to bring towards the MAPS 3 advisory board today, a recommendation to spend MAPS 3 trails excess funds on connections for several trails on the southeast side and the ones that have been discussed. Um, this, this wasn't made overnight. Um, this was first brought up in February. We sent uh, uh, the, city count, or the city staff back to look at it again. It was presented in March. Um, we had more discussion. We had more uh, citizens participate. We sent it back uh, in April um, for the same reason, and again in May, and then finally in June, we felt that we had uh, a recommendation for MAPS 3 funding, excess for, uh, funding for trails and sidewalks, $3.4 million, to try and make some of these connections. That decision was made because we did not believe that within the subcommittee, we had enough money on our own to go out and build another trail in the south side, uh, southwest side of Oklahoma City. I, I don't deny with Mr. Adams that we do need to continue efforts in that area. But the subcommittee uh, made a recommendation to spend what little money we have left to make connections with some of the major trails. Um, and, and that motion was, was passed. Um, and we recommended that we bring it forward to the board and we'll take that to the city council. Um, so I, I, for one, um, would have to, to vote against the measure that's been put forth by Mr. Adams because this has been vetted for the last five months uh, over and over and over and over again um, we're, we're 12 years into a 10 year program and we're simply trying to finish up what little money MAPS 3 trails and sidewalks have. And we felt the best way to do that was try to make connections with 
trails that were put forth in the original motion under, or it's not a motion, under item J, which is connections with the Katy trails, um, to the other ones here. Yeah, we have it. Okay. And so that's what the subcommittee recommended. Um, now, if, if you choose to vote to send us back a sixth time, we will do that. But I do not believe that the subcommittee uh, is going to change um, unless a lot of money comes from us from somewhere that we're not aware of. Um, you know, Mr. Adams had mentioned that, that his discussions with Moore, and they said they would be interested. I didn't hear anybody say that they would provide money. Um, he's also mentioned that Cleveland County would uh, come forward and they were interested, but they have not provided any funds uh, to build an additional trail. There are future plans for continuing to extend the Oklahoma City Trail plan. It's just that those plans are outside of the financial bounds that we were established under MAPS 3 Trails and Sidewalk Subcommittee. Okay. Uh, other subcommittee, uh, other citizens advisory board committee want to comment, have questions? Uh, I, would, I would just add, I guess, um, I, I think that the projects that are outlined here are all important projects, important connections to be made. But if we really look at them, you know, they're, they're not MAPS 3 projects. They weren't part of the original MAPS 3 plan although important, they don't connect to any of the existing MAPS 3 trails. And I think our first obligation is to try to, to fulfill the, the, the plan that MAPS 3 laid out. And, and, and all I'm asking to do is to defer a decision today and let the subcommittee come back and tell us how much money they think they would need to do that. And let's consider that whether we can have the money and we can find the money and whether that's our priority. Um, you know, I, I'm not against the ones that are there. I just think that, that our first obligation is to, to meet the, uh, the plans and promises that are in MAPS 3 and, and, to, and to address the obvious underserved Southwest side of Oklahoma City. So that's all I'm asking for is that we uh, kick it back and let them look at it and, and, Dave, and work with David and whoever else and come back and say, we need X amount of money to do this, and, 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 uh, and, and let's consider that. that that's, that's the ask. And, and I would say that we've done that five times. Not come to the board and told us how much money you would need to, to build the trail that was in the original implementation plan. Anyone else? Yeah, Tom, that's Bob Nealon. Uh, I, I have several thoughts about this. To, to begin with, I have to say it's, it, it's a very difficult decision to do. And I'm still a little bit uh, confused that the memorandum that, that comes to us from the, the trail subcommittee recognizes that funding is available for only three of the proposed trails, and yet they don't really choose among them uh, as to, to which they would would do. Uh, and Mike Adams has a very valid point that the, the southwest quadrant of the city uh, has been underserved as far as the, the allocation of funds uh, for trails. Uh, and I, I think I understand Zane's point that this has been talked about uh, numerous times and, and it's not an easy decision to make. My sense is that using some of these funds to complete those Katie connections will give us the biggest bang for the buck in terms of uh, the number of people served, the number of trails that become interconnected. Uh, the cost is really the lowest among the, the various options uh, to complete those links that would uh, greatly serve, uh, you know, in connecting a lot of trails uh, together. Uh, I, I share Mike's concern, though, about getting something in Southwest Oklahoma City. Uh, and I'm wondering 
Uh, Mike, you don't, and I'm not sure there is any estimate at this point, uh, the proposal you have for the, the trail along May Avenue that would run uh, from, uh, what is it, 6th Street or thereabouts on down to uh, 139th. Uh, what, what the cost of that would be more than what funds remain in, in maps. But I'm wondering, for example, has anybody thought about extending a trail? Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure I'm getting the terminology right, but maybe it, it looks like it would be the grand uh, trail that uh, is sort of northeast of the, the airport uh, running some uh, trail along May Avenue south of there, 114th or 139th. Some funds could be used to start a trail uh, down toward, uh, you know, parallel to the to the airport, maybe down toward uh, I-240 at least, uh, is for that green project. And I don't know the cost of that, but I'm not sure how well that's been analyzed or thought about uh, as, as an alternative possibility, uh, rather than doing the air depot or doing what is estimated as an early wine trail, it's further south. Would it be more valuable to do something a little bit further north, uh, northeast of the airport instead of southeast of, of the airport? These are all considerations I, I certainly don't have the answer to. I don't know what funds required what the priorities would be. Like I say, I would probably favor doing the Katy Trail connection first and looking at what other funds we have with the idea as well that perhaps four is going to have uh, funds allocated uh, for sidewalks and trails as well. I have no idea how much money. Uh, that's obviously much further down the road than what we're talking about now. Uh, for those alternatives areas of funding that will eventually be a possibility. I think on the balance, uh, with all due respect to Zane and the fact that I know his subcommittee has bounced this around for a long time, I, I think I probably favor uh, Mike's motion to table the decision today, let the subcommittee uh, mull it over a little bit more. I know fifth or sixth time, whatever, but uh, uh, maybe think about some of those alternatives for the southwest uh, part of the city and figure out what the cost would be and whether it truly is an option that might replace some uh, of the, the ones of these four that are on the list now so we can come back and truly make a decision which ones we uh, propose to the council. Mr. Neeland, I, I could help. I should have been a little clear in my description. So there's $3.4 million, as Jason Cotton pointed out. These four were the ones that kind of rose to the top, and that's why they're listed on there and listed as, as options to choose from. I did not, um, I was not very clear that the subcommittee had picked the, the, uh, the Air Depot Trail, the Katy Trail, and the matching funds for the Greenway Trail. And the reason why it doesn't come to you with that information is because these agendas are posted ahead of the time when those decisions are made. So the, the subcommittee did vote on those three of the four, and it comes to you with the same question posed. Other comments? Yeah. All right. Can you hear me, Tom? Yes, I can, Mike. Yeah, I got a question, I think, to, to Zane. Zane, I'm trying to get a sense of if, 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 and I know funds, of course, are not unlimited, but if there were more funds and the committee was wrestling with doing something in that part of southwest Oklahoma City that apparently everyone seems to agree has, uh, for whatever the reasons, has been uh, ignored or, or, or there's nothing going on there, um, do you have a sense of, if, if the committee would prefer to do that in lieu of the recommendation that's coming forward today on these connections with the Katy trails, or do you think going forth, the guys still would recommend the Katy trails as the, a priority 
assuming you need to take those monies in addition to some other monies to be able to do something on the southwest side. Does that question make sense? Yeah, it does, Mike. And, and let me let me talk about that. Um, you know, uh, first of all, the southwest side is is not being ignored by trails. It, it's just we did not have enough money in Maps Three to build a fourth. So with the small amount of money, the 3.4 that we have left over within the sidewalks and trails uh, funds, that's what we thought we would use. And the subcommittee along with uh, okay, Bike OKC and the Oklahoma City Trails subcommittees and the parks is, was always to, if we can't build a fourth, let's at least take that money and connect where we can, where it made sense, and let either map four or better, uh, better streets and safer cities uh, focus on continuing the growth of trails, um, whether that was in the south, northeast, northwest, I just, you know, there's only so much we can do in maps three. Um, we had the limited uh, amount of money. Now, if you're talking about that you're willing to give us all of the remaining MAPS 3 funds to go build an additional trail, um, we'll certainly take a look at that. But that's going to take all of the remaining funds from all of the other MAPS 3 programs. So if you have any shortages, you won't have it. Anyone else? Well, I think the information that Jason gave us was that it takes about $1.1 million to build a mile of trails. And so it'd be interesting to know what you could do with, if you could build three miles of trails, is that what, is that what that means, David? Um, and we could build, I think Jason's chart showed that it cost one, about a million dollars to build a mile of trails. So if we have 3.4, we could build 3.4 miles of trails. Is that Rough, roughly? That's, I'm, I know I'm oversimplifying, yes. which, is, which is my long suit. Uh, so uh, that's something to think about. I, I just say, if, from where I'm sitting, I, I think the trails and subcommittee, the trails and sidewalk subcommittee, uh, had the same issue with the sidewalks. I mean, we didn't have enough money to build every sidewalk we wanted, so we decided on some priorities, and, and we did it. I think they've done a tremendous job. But I have to say, I agree with Mike Adams, that at least all of us seem to not be clear that we've exhausted every possibility and that there might be something to be gained by tabling this, asking them to consider the comments that have been made today and see if there's any alternative uh, if additional funding was available. I don't know that, as Zane has already said, uh, he thinks it would take all of the additional maps unfunded money I don't and I'm not arguing with that but I think that there is enough momentum for us to think about doing something in southwest Oklahoma City that we ought to feel like we had exhausted every possibility uh, before we before we decide and if we've learned anything over the course of the last decade there's no rush about this we've got uh, time to think about this Mr. so Mr. I'm going to vote with Mike Adams I'm Mr. Chairman, this is That's Zane Boatwright again. Mr. Chairman. Yes. This is Zane Boatwright again. Um, and I would yes. say that, yes, Mr. Adams brought this forward to us two months ago. Uh, it was considered then. It was reconsidered an, the month after that. And so it has been bantered back and forth. We've kicked it back and forth um, for, like I say, for five months, trying to prioritize where we'd take that last $3.4 million dollars. And the, the item J is the recommendation that the subcommittee came forward with. Now, if, if you direct us to go back, we will do that again. I can't guarantee that the recommendation would change. Well, we, we've had, we've I, had, I understand perfectly. Yeah. yeah. We've had, you know, we've All had, right, any other comments? Yeah, we, we've, had, you know, we've had projects uh, from other subcommittees that have have run, it, run into cost overruns and various reasons. And they've come to the board and they've asked for excess funds. And we've considered, and I think in most cases, granted those. And so that's all I'm asking for here is tell us what it takes. 
make an ask of what it would do, what you could do, and 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 come back to us. And we we may may not have the funds. We may not may not want to do that. That may not be the priority. But let's let's at least get it on the table and get a consideration and uh, and look at the possibilities. Yeah, I, just my final thought. I, I think that makes sense to wait another uh, a, a meeting, uh, not understanding your kind of frustration, perhaps, Zane, but to know how much money it would take to do a, an additional trail. And let's see what happens. So for that reason, I'm inclined to support uh, Mike's uh, Adam's motion. Councilwoman Nice, I'd also add that uh, uh, you have a broader view than we do in, as a member of the city council, and we're just volunteers only involved with MAP3, as Zane has, has, has said. If you are aware of other sources that could be used to, to match MAP3 money for, for us to accomplish these broader goals, we'd be glad to hear from you when we... Uh, when we meet again. Uh, Thank you, and I, I think that's the important part about this. Excuse me for interrupting you. Uh, but uh, again, as I said before, it's important. While the funds are different, a lot of these projects are trying to mimic in some aspects and connect, yeah. clearly connect. So if I can, we can figure that part out so we can all advocate together for other pieces of money. That's what I'm, I'm hoping that we can do. So that's what my ask is and us trying to understand or helping me better understand which funds are supposed to go for which projects and how can we make that work. So thank you so much. You bet. All right then, uh, if there are no other comments, uh, we have a motion uh, before us to table the action and send it back to the subcommittee with a request that they consider the comments that have been made by the Citizens Advisory Board and the citizens who have spoken and, uh, and uh, consider again what they'd like to have us do, even if it's the same thing. And so uh, the motion to table is before us. Cast your vote. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm not saying uh a vote opportunity on uh, uh, prime gov. It may be because this is a motion to table and not the uh, the principle of the resolution that was before us. We may need to do a voice vote. Other people have voted, so if you want to tell me, I can put your vote in. Okay, I I vote in favor of uh, tabling Mr. Uh, Adams' motion. And okay, Mr. Nathaniel, voting aye. I also. I also don't see the vote opportunities. Okay, Mr. Dover? Aye. Uh, that motion is passed. Uh, I appreciate the, uh, the good discussion we had and, and uh, we will uh, we'll look forward to hearing what uh, uh, and seeing what is available to us next month. Thank you for your consideration. That brings us to item five. Is there any new business to come before the meeting? No, sir. Uh, we have, uh, do we have any separate reports from any of the uh, MAP3 Citizens Advisory Board subcommittees under item six? All right. David, do you have any further update under item <clears throat> seven? Um, ribbon cutting this afternoon at the river for the renovations that we're doing out there. Uh, lots of work still going on with senior wellness. Um, Lower Park, you saw the update on that. I also want to remind everyone that this will be the last video meeting. The next meeting will be in person again in council chambers. Everyone hear that? Next meeting in person. Mr. Chairman, this All right. is... I've got a comment. I would like us to make sure we we really understand what we just voted on, because when I looked at the vote, it was for recommending the, the Katy Trail and the other trail connections, not Mr. Dover's uh, measure to table. And I want clarification but, on that. The, the motion... Um, was to table, I think. Yeah, the, the motion super... Is that the word... Sir, the action that was taken 
on prime gov said tabled yeah okay and so you okay. voted to table yeah so we didn't vote not to do the recommendation we just voted to table consideration of it and to uh consider it again next month all right uh then that brings us to uh item eight any comments by board or staff no sir uh, any additional citizens' comments? No, sir. All right. That brings us to item nine, adjournment. Is there any further business? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your patience today. Appreciate all the good work.